Hi everybody, so I'm Ollie. I'm the other founder at Torchbox, um, creative director. I have a little bit of oversight on the user experience and interaction design work that we do on Wagtail. So Carl's going to demo the uh, Wagtail localized feature, but before he does that, I'm just going to introduce, uh, introduce it a little bit and introduce a couple of the fundamental design decisions that we've made along the way. And it'd be rather old school and use a, um, use a keynote deck. Uh, but people haven't seen one of these for a while. Uh, okay. So, uh, Wagtail Localize. Localize provides features for translation and localization. So very broadly, um, you know, translation is just the actual act of translating a piece of content, whereas localization is when you translate the content and then you change it to give it more local relevance. So, for example, changing a photo to something more locally significant or rewriting content in a more culturally acceptable way. And there are two ways to sort of tackle this, this kind of problem in, in CMSs. So the first way is, is, is field level localization. So this is where you provide alternate content versions on the same page. Here are a couple of uh, kind of ways this has been done historically in Wagtail. So on the left, you can see just about, I hope, that there's a series of title fields in different languages and you'd get this kind of replication of field uh, with the different language versions for every field you had on your page in this kind of implementation. And then on the right, you can see it's the same sort of, uh, it's the same situation in that it's in the same page, but this time translations are contained within separate tabs. So it's a bit uh, possibly have a nicer kind of editing experience and, and, and perhaps a bit more scalable, but it's still the same fields in the same page. The other option is to do page level localization. So this is where each language variant is stored in a completely separate page in Wagtail and that ends up creating separate sort of language branches or sites within, within your, your Wagtail instance. And this approach works better as a more flexible, scalable solution, we think. So this is the approach that we've taken in Wagtail Localize. Um, so what are the advantages of this approach? Firstly, you know, a translation or a localized version can be an exact translation of, of the site, but also you might want it so that that translated localized version grows independently of the original version. So you might have your English site here, but then your Spanish site, you might want to have extra sections or extra content in time. So in order to do that, you need really a separate sort of site. Uh, with the page level localization, um, it kind of, um, it's very scalable. Whereas with field level localization, where you might have, say, 12 language versions of a big page on the same page, you can, you can see how you might have some performance issues with that. Um, and when you have page level localization, these different sites, you can have some language instances published and some in draft statuses. Whereas if it's all, if your languages are all on the same page, they're all, that page is either published or not. Uh, and finally, you can translate slugs too, which is nice in this page level kind of approach. So that's the first kind of important design decision that we've made. The other thing that I want to show you is, is how do we actually translate content? And we've created a kind of different interface for translating and managing translated content within Wagtail. I'm just going to explain how that that interface is particularly important when you're when you're doing linked uh, pages. So here I've got my English site and my French site, uh, my Wagtail Bakery sites, and you can see the baguette page is kind of I've got this line indicating that it's linked to the uh, the French baguette page is linked to the English baguette page the idea is that we'd want to keep them totally in sync so if we made a change to the English version we'd like to tell the French translated version to update itself um, so so in that sort of situation you don't want editors going in and making other sorts of changes but it may be that you want to separate these these kind of different pages and create separate localized page versions in the way that I talked about that that kind of different language site scaling and becoming it, it something separate. Uh, in this case, you want to kind of make the break that kind of sync link between the English baguette page and the French baguette page. I mean, of course, the French have probably got an awful lot more to say about baguettes than English people, so you don't want that exact relation. 
So we've created a special interface to manage the initial translation and those pages that stay in this linked mode. And I want to just show you that now. So on the left of my screen, you can see the standard Wagtail edit page interface. And on the right of the screen, you can see the same page translated into French in translation mode. So the first thing to note about when you're doing a translation in a content management system is you don't generally translate it line by line in a way that you might in enter content. You tend to use a translation service. So uh, you download a, a PO file, a portable object file, send it off to your translation service and then upload the translated, upload the translated version that fills in all the translations here. Uh, if you don't have a translation service, you can either do it manually or can, you can use a machine translation service like Deeple or Google Translate or whatever, and Carl will show you this in a second. And if you want your page to stay in this linked mode where it's an exact replica of the uh, original uh, content version, you leave it in this mode and we're able to identify when each of these strings need updating and show you that nice and clearly. But if you want to change your page and let it kind of evolve beyond the translated version, adding new content, uh, then you'll want to end translation mode. You can see that's the top link in the in the drop up at the bottom. And uh, when you do that, it'll return this page to a normal page edit mode. So it'll be the French language stuff, but displayed as a normal Wagtail edit page would be. Okay, I hope that's given you a little bit of an intro and, uh, and I'm gonna hand over to Carl now for the demo. Thank you, Ollie. Hello everyone, I'm Carl. And I'm going to demo the Wagtail localized package. So here's my screen. So as you can see, this is the Wagtail bakery demo. This is our internal uh, demo we use for building and demoing new Wagtail features. This particular version has the latest version of Wagtail installed and uh, also the Wagtail localized package. Uh, currently the entire site is in English. Uh, and as you can see, if you look at the URL up here, we have uh, a prefix on the whole site slash en. Uh, this is uh, so we can uh, have separate URLs for each uh, language. So for example, France would be slash fr, but for your default language, it's optional to have the slash en. You can configure this to just respond on the, the root URL. The advantage of having it in this way is that it allows you to have uh, browser language detection. So say if I visit the site at the root path, it should automatically forward me to slash en. And um, anyone else who has a, a foreign language uh, browser will be rooted to the correct language. So now I'm going to quickly show you how to translate this site into French using Wagtail Localize. So I'm going to just go to the Wagtail admin. And the first thing I have to do is set up a new locale. So currently, uh, so we go into settings locales and currently we just have English and I'm going to add a new locale. And the, local, the, the reason why we call them locales is we'd like to uh, encourage you to use these also uh, for localizing content into particular regions. In this example, I only have uh, languages set up, so English, French, and Spanish. These are configured by your uh, developer, and it, and, it, and it really depends on um, what your front end supports. So if you're, you know, if you're uh, haven't got translations in your front end for a particular language, you shouldn't, you wouldn't add it here. Um, you can actually uh, set up, you know, regions on, on these as well. So you have French for Canada and French for France as well. Uh, so I'm going to set up French and uh, I'm going to set this sync from field to English. And what this does is it'll initialize the whole site with the uh, existing English content and any uh, changes that are made to English content will actually be affected to French unless those pages have been uh, translated. Uh, so let's save that. And now this should have created a new uh, page tree based on the English tree. So it's exactly the same as English at the moment. Um, and we can navigate through that tree using these uh, new little UIs, this uh, jumps us between the English version and the French. Uh, but yes, it's, 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 it's exactly mirroring the uh, English content. Uh, if we try and edit one of these pages, you'll see we'll get a warning saying that this is a mirror. Any changes that are made to the English version at this time will be also automatically uh, uh, synced with the French. But if we translate the page, that'll allow us to actually uh, turn this into a French page. So let's hit that button. 
uh, and click submit. Uh, now you see uh, the uh, page editor has changed into this new um, new translation editor. Each uh, paragraph of the page and field value has been split out into a separate field. This prevents uh, translators from modifying the structure of the page and it, allow, and it allows keeping it up to date with the English content much easier. But we can disable that. I'll show you how to do that later. We can uh, translate this, this content uh, directly. So I can set this birds and click save. And now that uh, string is translated. Or we can download a, uh, a PO file for the entire page. So we just open that. And this is just a, a standard format for transferring the source strings. And also when these are filled in, uh, we can upload that PO file here with the, with the translations. And then those translations will be loaded in. Uh, we can also translate with a machine translation service. Uh, so I've got this set with default and I'll just quickly try that now. So let's click that button. As you can see, this is now filled in all those uh, empty strings with, with some, some French. So uh, Deepl, by the, as the name suggests, uses uh, deep learning. So these are fairly good quality. They're, they're probably not as good as, as a, a, a human written one, but they're, they're pretty good. And also, they also support um, uh, inline styling as well. So things like bold text and, and links that are in the previous uh, English version have actually been carried through to the French, which I think is really nice. Uh, before I move on, I'd, I'd like to quickly show you how images are handled. As you can see, we got uh, all the images on the page are also displayed here. Uh, by default, it'll stay in sync with the English version. So this, if this image is updated in the English version of the page, it'll be updated here too. But you can optionally override them for certain locales. You might want to do this, for example, if it had some English text uh, on, on that image and you wanted to replace it with a version with the text translated to French. Uh, so I'll just quickly demo how that is done. You just hit this uh, change image button here and I'm going to search for a baguette. And now that's replaced. Uh, it'll stay like that until we uh, switch it back to English. If there's a, a, any updates to English, that won't, be, that won't update this, but we can uh, switch back to the English version by clicking this button here. Uh, so let's publish that. Uh, and now view live. As you can see, the page is now in, in French. We've got all this uh, yeah, and as you can see, all the, all the uh, links have also been carried through as well. And that image is now a baguette instead of... Uh, yeah. So there are still some bits of this site that aren't translated into French. So as you can see, these pages here, uh, these are still mirroring the English content. So I'll quickly show you how to translate a page, another page. So let's translate this Anadama page. Uh, now let's edit this. And that takes us back to the same view we got earlier. If we hit translate this page and then submit, we now get to the translation editor. Um, yeah, so I'll quickly translate this to default. And there we go. And also actually there's another way of, of uh, translating content um, that I forgot to mention a minute ago. Uh, you can integrate this with a external translation service. So uh, Mozilla are currently using an, an older version of this, but uh, that's um, automatically synchronizing with uh, a service called Pontoon. And here we have the content of give.mozilla.org, uh, and that's being translated to French and German through here. So these uh, files are created by Wagtail and kept up to date by Wagtail. And as soon as a, uh, a contributor translates them and they get approved, they're automatically sent back to Wagtail and Wagtail creates the pages. Um, yes, yeah, so and finally, I'd like to show you uh, how uh, snippets are handled. So as you can see here, we've got two snippets that both have got uh, text on them. So we would need to translate these as well. Um, these are brought out here and they're automatically submitted. Uh, so that we can click edit. That takes you to the uh, editor for the snippet, and we can just translate these using Deeple again, and I'll publish them. 
copy back, edit that, and then hit deploy again. Publish. And there we go, they should be, they should say one out of one segments translated. Uh, let's publish this page and we can view it live. There we go. So it's all in, Eng in French and these have also been translated to French. Uh, if we later decide that we want to change the structure of this page, we can disable the translation mode by going into the actions and click end translation mode. Um, this means that it'll no longer receive any updates from the English version, but it will remain linked to the uh, original page. But this lets you uh, add extra paragraphs to, to the page if you like. Uh, finally, I'd like to show you uh, how we would translate a snippet that is on its own. So uh, at the bottom of this uh, site, you've got this uh, little quote uh, that's not linked to any page. So we need to translate this independently of a page. So let's uh, go into here and then we can go snippets, footer text. This is where that, that footer text is managed and uh, we can hit translate here. And I'll translate that to French, submit. And now if we visit the French side, we can edit that. And here we go. We've got a, a translation of that here. Let's say Deeple, publish it. And now if we go to the French site, we go to the beginning, it should have pulled in the French version of that snippet. There we go. That's everything uh, you think I was going to show. Uh, so Wagtail Localize, we plan to uh, release version 1.0 of that around the same time as Wagtail 2.11, which would be around the beginning of, of November.